I talk to so many men who tell me that they were just diagnosed with adult ADHD. And I gotta tell you, it chaps my arse a little bit when I hear it so often. Hey, welcome back for another episode of Porn Brain Rewire with me, Dr. Trish Lee. Today we are going to discuss if porn causes ADHD. I talk to so many men who tell me that they were just diagnosed with adult ADHD. And I gotta tell you, it chaps my arse a little bit when I hear it so often. But in this podcast, what we're going to do is we are first going to discuss what ADHD is in terms of brain performance, in terms of frontal lobe functioning, in terms of the reward system. Then we're going to go to what porn does to your brain in relation to attention and focus and ADHD. Then third, what we're going to do is talk about how can you know for sure if you have what I call quote unquote organic ADHD, or if your brain has been impacted by porn use in a similar but different way. And then stay with me until the end of this podcast, because of course I'm going to have your brain hack strategy for the day on how you can improve your attention and focus. Number one, let's talk about what is ADHD in terms of brain performance or brain functioning. So we'll start with the conversation on how does attention fall out in the brain? In terms of the way I think about brain performance, which is using EEG, electroencephalogram, all the areas of our brain have been identified for the skill or ability that they are in control of. So we know that this area, if you're watching me on YouTube, the frontal lobe is for attention, focus, working memory on the left, impulse control and judgment primarily on the right. The entire frontal lobe is for socialization. And we know that the frontal lobe is linked through pathways to the reward center in the midbrain. So attention is primarily up front in your brain. And when you have the ability to focus and you're in calm focus, you have the ability to attend, you're not impacted by distractors, your brain is running at the perfect speed to be able to focus on what you are doing and then be able to move through small steps to a larger end goal, gleaning rewards at tiny small pieces or at small amounts along the way, but then culminating in the completion of a bigger project. This is called executive function. At the completion of this bigger project, your brain gets a larger amount of dopamine. So that's what optimal brain performance feels like when your frontal lobe is running well. Now, what I mean by running well is that it's using electrical energy at the perfect frequency. And frequency is Hertz. It's literally cycles per second of how fast that electrical energy is moving in your brain. So typically between around 12 and 15 Hertz is optimal frequency for calm focus. Calmer is going to be down closer to 10. More focused is going to be up to 15 Hertz. 15 Hertz is 15 cycles per second. So what happens when you have difficulty with attention? One of two things or both simultaneously occur. So one of these two things might happen or they might happen comorbidly at the same time. The first thing is that your brain might be running too slow. So if you have organic ADHD, you were born with a brain that at rest or when you're trying to focus runs a little bit slow to, slower, closer to seven Hertz. That's why doctors will prescribe stimulant medication because the goal is to get this slower five to seven Hertz brain to go 12 to 15 Hertz in the day. 12 to 15 Hertz is a speed called beta and it's kind of perfect processing speed. This slower speed, five to seven Hertz is called theta. Theta is like having the brakes on in your brain. Theta is supposed to engage to make you feel groggy and to help you fall asleep. In the evening, it's not supposed to be engaged while you're at work or while you're at school. That's what will drag your brain and make you feel tired or fatigued or make it feel very difficult to attend. So 
This slow speed's called theta. It's like putting the brakes on, but you don't want the brakes on in your brain during the day. Now, I said one of two things or both is happening. The second thing is that your brain might be running entirely too fast. It could be running up to 30 hertz. So if your brain is going this fast, it's like one of those bullet trains. If you're on a bullet train, not that I've been, but if you're on a bullet train, you can't see the trees within the forest because your brain is going so fast. So it's difficult to focus and it's difficult to get things done well because your brain is going so fast, you can't slow it down enough. This extra fast speed is called high beta. So I told you that your brain can also be in both of those modes simultaneously. We know from the science that high beta and theta coexist comorbidly at the same time more often than not. So if your brain is running slow because you were born with ADHD, what it inherently does is it puts the gas, the pedal to the metal to compensate for the slower speed for the braking. But that's the feeling of braking and gassing. That's the feeling of wanting to be calmed down, but also wanting to be stimulated. That's the feeling of wired and tired. And that is the pendulum brain and it creates a lot of strain in the system, so I've started to call it strained brain. We know that ADHD is decreased functioning in the frontal lobe, but it is less than optimal functioning. And so I've been helping people with ADHD for over 30 years. And this is something that's important to me because I want people to know that's the beauty of neuroplasticity. Just because your brain is running too slow, we can make your brain run a little bit faster so that it's at that optimal processing speed so you can think well, you can feel well, and you can perform better. And the struggle goes down. We know that the marker for ADHD is something that's called a TBR, theta to beta ratio. So many times theta is too high. And I told you it might comorbidly have high beta, but for many people, Beta, that 12 to 15 hertz, is also running low. And that's a person with slower processing speed. Not the brakes on, just the gas is going a little bit slower. So when I measure people's brain performance patterns, I'm looking at the TBR ratio. ADHD is a theta to beta ratio that's too high. Too much theta, possibly not enough beta, and most times too much high beta is coexisting. And it gives a person the feeling of not being able to focus, not being able to attend, being highly distracted, hyperactivity. Hyperactivity physically is self-stimulation using the body to offset the slow speed. It gives people anxiety, overthinking. Overthinking is self-stimulation of the slower speed using your mind. So at the same time, we also know that dopamine levels are low in people who have ADHD. And it that cascading of the neurotransmitters has to do with how the brain is using electrical energy. So the electrical energy in your brain is like your software. It's, it's the software that's running the show. And then the cascade of neurotransmitters falls out from the optimal brain performance pattern all the way out to highly dysregulated brain patterns, dysfunctional brain patterns. So essentially, the more dysfunction, the more the cascade of neurotransmitters and hormones and physiological processes are going to change. So if your brain is in the middle, in that sweet spot, in the green zone, as I call it, because it's a green QEG brain map, then the processes in your body are going to fall out in a healthy way. So the greater the magnitude of brain dysfunction, the greater the magnitude of dysfunction of neurotransmitters, hormones, chemicals, physiological processes in the body. Now let's segue to number two. How does porn impact your brain, especially in relation to ADHD? The same brain pattern, the pendulum brain or the strained brain, is at the core of a problematic porn use habit. So if you've been compulsively using Pornography, if you've gone back to the screen to get more dopamine, to feel good, and to offset those feelings of needing stimulation or needing to be calmed down, 
It's in fact very much related. So the question here on this video is, does porn cause ADHD? And I'm going to answer it at the end. But the, the question's more difficult than that. And that's what we're going to break down in just a second. So if you saw the movie Venom, such a good movie. I know some people don't think it is, but Venom is kind of the, you know, he's, he's a symbiote to Spider-Man. And then he impacts people in a negative way because the symbiosis means that they feed off of each other. So in terms of ADHD and porn use, they are definitely feeding off each other. But if you do not have the organic ADHD pattern and you are consuming pornography, we know it's decreasing functioning in the frontal lobe and it's desensitizing the reward center. What does that sound like? It sounds like the brain pattern that causes ADHD. So in fact, it's causing the brain pattern that causes the symptomology of ADHD. But they're different because ADHD is a neurodevelopmental disorder, which means your brain was born with that slow processing speed of too much theta. So for some people who've had a porn habit for a long time, your brain was not born with too much theta. What happened was you found porn in adolescence and it made it so that your brain used too much theta across the rest of development. What happens is your brain continues to use too much theta when theta should have been decreasing in terms of its use. When a baby is born, the baby sleeps all the time, right? So that means the baby's brain is using primarily extra slow speed delta. Then into childhood, the baby sleeps less and is awake more and is highly imaginative and creative. That means the brain starts using more theta, less delta. Then in young, when you're a young child and into adolescence, what happens is you sleep even less and your brain starts using more beta and using less theta. But if porn gets into the mix at that time in development, the decrease in theta doesn't happen. It actually increases because of porn use and the beta use doesn't increase. It stabilizes and stays there. And every time you go back to porn, you're increasing the use of theta, decreasing functioning in the frontal lobe. And you're also desensitizing the reward center through high levels of dopamine. Going back to the, the idea of symbiosis is that people who have organic ADHD naturally want more stimulation. And so in a research article that's by Kenneth Blum uh, and Associates, he talks about it as reward deficiency syndrome and that ADHD is one diagnosis that falls into reward deficiency syndrome. And what that means is it's a brain with less dopamine that seeks out more dopamine or seeks out more stimulation to feel good. So if you actually are diagnosed with organic ADHD, you need porn more than a person who wasn't born with organic ADHD. But... Then in watching porn, your brain is accelerating the ADHD pattern. So you need it more and more and more and more because that's the nature of dopamine. So porn can cause the feelings of ADHD because it causes the ADHD brain pattern for those who weren't born with it. Those who were born with ADHD have a higher likelihood of wanting to go to porn to feel calmed and stimulated but in doing so, it's worsening the ADHD brain pattern. Let's segue to number three. How do you know if you have organic ADHD or if you might have porn induced ADHD? Before third grade or before you found porn, did you have learning challenges? Was learning difficult for you? Did you have some of these symptoms? And if the answer is yes, it's likely you have the organic ADHD pattern, which puts you more at risk for enjoying porn because of the reward deficiency syndrome that that pattern gives your brain. Now, if you were a strong learner until you found porn and then in middle school and in high school, things started to crap the bed a little bit and the struggle became real in college, then it's more likely that it's porn induced ADHD 
because your brain was using 12 to 15 hertz when you were young. And then when porn came into the mix, it started to increase the slower speed, five to seven hertz. And if you kept going back, you're slowing your brain down even more. Now, another thing happens in porn too, is that it will lower power in the brain. And if you consume a lot of pornography for uh, over the course of a long time, frequent, consistent, and especially intense, and especially if you are involved in edging in any way, which means you're going back to porn or masturbation or fantasy without orgasm to keep your brain lingered in this dopamine state. If you are involved in any of that and you're really struggling with focus, attention, and distraction and erectile dysfunction, likely what's happened is you've shifted your brain into drain brain, which is like an artificially induced long-term dopamine induced state. And it can create porn induced ADHD. So another way that you can know if you have true organic ADHD, and if it's more porn induced ADHD is to have a QEG brain map. This is what I do all day, every day. I can use technology in your home, which makes it so easy. I work with people all over the world. I can see exactly what brain patterns your brain is using. I can see if it's more organic. I can see if it's more porn induced ADHD. I can see if there's the anxiety piece. I can see exactly how much theta is being used in the frontal lobe or anywhere else. It's very measurable. It's called quantitative EEG, electroencephalogram, and it measures how your brain is performing in all of the areas that I talked about. And I can even see the magnitude of ADHD. I can see the magnitude of porn induced ADHD. I can see the magnitude of erectile dysfunction, meaning I can see if you're one level off from optimal, if you're six levels off from optimal in every single brain area. And then obviously the more dysfunction, the more it changes all of that cascade of neurotransmitters, hormones, and physiological processes. That's why the bigger the dysfunction, the bigger the problems you'll have. So that's how you can know faux show. Sure. That's how you can know for sure is doing a measurable brain map. And if you're interested, go over to drtrishlee.com. Uh, under work with Dr. Trish Lee, there's a tab that says QEG brain map. Check it out. You'll see the brain pattern for ADHD. You'll see the brain pattern for internet addictions. They are different, um, but they are symbiotic and uh, they're like venom in nature. Okay, so what's your brain hack strategy for the day? If you are struggling with focus, distraction, attention, it is imperative that you stop watching pornography. No matter if you have organic or not, porn is making it worse. And I get emails from people all the time saying, I can't believe how much better I feel. I thought you were nutty when I first heard you, but then I've been able to stay out of the screen for 35 days, 172 days, and my life is completely different. It's essential that you stop watching porn. So if you're not able to stop watching porn, go to my website under Porn Brain Rewire, Check out the digital programs. The 90 day program is what you need. It has everything to stay out of the screen. But if you've already been able to stay out of the screen and your brain hasn't rewired itself, I offer a really short course called Brain Training 101, where I teach you how to use technology. So if you get into Brain Training 101, and at this recording, it's $49, it's very affordable. I teach you how to use that headband so that you can train your brain out of the ADHD pattern into the optimal pattern by yourself at home. But this is what I want you to know. This is the brain hack is that you can take the control back. I know it seems like a cliche uh, little saying that I made up a long time ago, but it's totally true. So if you're giving the control over to porn, it is controlling your brain. And at the same time, ADHD, this pattern that's in there, whether you were born with it or not, it might be controlling you to a certain degree. And you can take that control back when you use technology to heal your brain. Technology and neuroscience. You need the tech, you need the proper strategies also. That's what's in those programs. It will bring your brain back. It'll create more neuroplasticity and it'll allow your brain to heal. I've helped so many people who had oppressive ADHD that was just dragging them down 
and now they don't have it anymore. And I owe it to the tech and the strategies that I was able to help these people do this for themselves. That's what I want you to know. Neuroplasticity can be your best friend or your worst enemy. Let's make it your best friend. Okay, go over to drtrishley.com. And until next time, control your brain or it'll control you.